Hi, and welcome to the soybean section from a, our uh, agronomy grower meetings that we do annually in the fall time, where we recap what we did on our farm, what went right, what went wrong, what we learned about it, and what we're going to do again for next year. Uh, so this is the soybean section. It's going to be a 10-minute uh, video on how we manage soybeans on our farm, the outcome of those management decisions, and as well, the uh, yields that we got from all the varieties that we saw on our farm and all the varieties that we sold to our customers. So we'll jump right into it. Seeding time. We seeded uh, May 13th to May 20th, our soybeans this year on our farm. We seeded with a DB60 uh, on 20 inch rows. We seeded uh, 175,000 seeds an acre. Uh, what's interesting about this is on emergence, uh, we only had about 140,000 seeds emerge, a fairly high percentage of mortality rate. And the reason for that ultimately was we seeded in mid-May, our first rain came in June, June, June 9th, I believe. Therefore, what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way is any of our seeds that emerged at seeding, not 140,000 seeds, were placed into good moisture at about an inch to an inch and a quarter deep and the other 30, 40,000 seeds an acre had to wait for rain to come. So we ended up with a bit of a two-stage crop and I'll actually jump ahead and show you that picture, which I thought was gonna be a, I'm gonna say more of a concern. So there's the plants that emerged late and there's the plants that emerged with in furrow moisture. So I'll back up. At the end of the day, didn't cause any yield disadvantage. Um, and we, I believe we were still able to maximize our yield or cause any harvest issues. So that was one challenge I saw on a whole in our fields and, and lots of other customers in Manitoba was some uneven emergence. Obviously, a part of that was in place due to the uh, horrendous fall work that was completed in the fall of 2019, which is bringing up memories, um, bad memories that is, so we won't, we won't jump into it, but that had to do with poor seedbed. So um, at the end of the day, uh, it was good to see we had enough plants, 140,000 to maximize our yield potential. We put on uh, some replacement phosphate the fall before and had incorporated it and uh, some elemental sulfur. And that elemental sulfur on our farm is simply being applied at the time with the phosphate, not just for the soybeans, but ultimately uh, to have in place on all of our fields when we seed canola on that field and wheat to ensure that we have even sulfur distributed through all of our acres. We put Optimize ST on the seed with nodulator liquid in furrow. We seed treated with Cruiser Max uh, and Lumacina. And we've done this practice for the last couple of years, uh, specifically after the spring of 2016, when Phytrother root rot uh, infection rates were very high. So we've seen Lumacina really suppress or reduce the amount of early season Phytophthora root rot, which has allowed us to maintain a higher plant stem. And so we treated with Lumacina this spring. Fortunately, unfortunately, however you want to look at it, we actually didn't see the Lumacina benefit at all because we didn't have any Phytophthora. Burn down products, we used uh, heat and or an extend product or dicamba product uh, in the springtime for pre-emergent in crop. We used Viper for volunteer canola and obviously the glyphosate. And we also did various fungicide trials this year on our soybeans, which you can see the results in another clip on soybean fungicide trials that will be uh, also available to you uh, via whatever format you're watching this on. So that's how we manage our soybeans. All in all, honestly, an exceptional soybean year. We had a heck of a crop coming. Uh, by July 24th, we were really setting ourselves up for some great yield potential. Now, <clears throat> here's a video of our small plot replicated trial that we had on our farm that I'm going to show you the results on. Uh, I'm not going to show you the video here. You can head to our website and take a live virtual tour of the mid to late season extend bean that we had in our small replicated trial results. And we did this small replicated trial results so that we could use real scale equipment to seed it and manage it with real scale equipment on a bigger field scale, but bring in a plot combine for more replicated re results to truly try and show the yield range 
replicate it between each variety in order to provide better data to you to make soybean decisions moving forward to next year. Okay, so I'm gonna jump ahead. I'm gonna jump through our portfolio of soybeans that we sold uh, this spring and have sold in past years. Won't spend much time on it. Watson's early season bean, uh, amazing at maintaining yield potential, whether it be in Northern Alberta or Southern Manitoba. Uh, if we get into a late seeding year in June, amazing yield potential seeding late. And this variety has been out for seven years and I believe it will be out many, many more years to come just because of the consistency that it provides in some lower heat unit ranges. Redverse, uh, early season bean uh, for Eastern and Southern Manitoba. However, if we get into a late seeding season and have some tougher soils, uh, this would be a good variety to put on. Um, very high yield potential in the heat unit range category it is. It's obviously not gonna compete with a 2450 or 2500 heat unit plant, but great yield potential. Gladstones, um, you've heard about them, you know about them. Bushy bean fills 30 inch rows. Mid maturing bean can be grown right across Manitoba. Um, not much seed supply left of it out there, uh, but there still some is if you're a diehard Gladstone fan. <clears throat> okay, now a little more into the heat unit range that is relevant to you and your growing area. Call Ross, mid maturing bean. It's going to mature somewhere along the uh, range of Y4s. Sometimes it's a day earlier, sometimes it's a day later. It's going to be a taller plant, fairly aggressive growing, can do well on wide spacing up to uh, 22 inch rows very easily. What I like about Kalros, very high pot height. That's what it's going to bring you. You've got stones, seed Kalros, you won't regret it. Okay, moving on. Cartier, this is new and exciting. Cartiers are 2450 heat unit soybeans. They are going to be tall. They can handle some tougher high cal calcium carbonate soils. They are aggressive growing. They are going to be replacing Starbuck in our lineup. And uh, why do we like Starbuck? Because they're sexy. You drive by a field of Starbuck, you recognize it, you remember it. It's the same thing with Cartier. When you drive by a field of Cartier, you do the old double take. Uh, that's, that's how good it looks. Um, we had a soft launch of it this year. Four or five customers had a chance to trial it out. And uh, it's safe to say that they were all very positive results uh, coming back from them. So, Spurlings, don't have to say much other than consistency. Consistency, consistency. Mid-season bean, it's going to do well in dry conditions, wet conditions. It's tall. It can be from 10 inch rows to 22 inch rows, um, widely adapted to a lot of different areas of Manitoba, good bean pod height. And what I really like about it, the double gene for Phytophthora root rot, that RPS1A and 3A is really gonna protect it against those wet soil conditions and protect it from late season Phytophthora setting in. And this is something we haven't seen yield drags because of Phytophthora since 2016. But when we do, Sperlings is gonna withstand that kind of pressure. So that's what I like about Sperlings, our top seller last year. And I'm making the early prediction that for 2021, it's gonna be our top seller as well. And Winklers, late season bean. If you want a variety that's going to win a trial, put Winklers in very, very high success rate of winning trials um, because of its late season, aggressive growing, handle lots of conditions. And the best part about it is IDC rating from Dennis Lang and the Manitoba Seed Grower Guide of 1.6. The lower number, the better. And 1.6 is the best number you can get. And Winkler has it. So poorly drained soil. Um, this is the bean for it. Okay. That's a bigger overview of all the varieties side by side. You know, I'll just highlight on a few things, double genes for Sperlings, 1A and 3A for type Phytophthora root rot. And then obviously Winklers down here at the bottom for high end yield potential and some of the best IBC rating. 
those are those are two things a person should remember if you want a tall soybean call ross is the variety for you early season okay i'm going to try to minimize my image in the corner here we go yield results from our farm on full field pieces we had a new early season triple zero seven maturity we started a harvesting in august under 100 days to maturity yielded 31. our next earliest maturing was call ross did 39 bushels an acre y4s a2xs both came in at 40 bushels an acre and then as i just mentioned high-end yield potential winklers 47 bushels an acre on 375 acres it used the late season rain i have not had a chance to explain when our rainfall periods came we had no rain from july 23rd to august 15th that really hurt our seed size development and our seed filling stage of our soybean plant however we got a rain on august 16th and what this tells me is those winklers that late season bean was able to utilize that rain much better than all the varieties who are starting their shutdown process because they're reaching maturity. Why I say that, look at the seed size. Seed size range, the higher the number, the smaller the seed. As we work our way to the late season bean, we get the biggest seed size, which means it had the moist moisture during grain fill period. And that's why ultimately it put on a higher yield is because it had more moisture in that seed filling period. Two factors that influence yield the most during those periods are obviously seed size and uh, and seed moisture at harvest time really contributing to your overall weight and volume okay i mentioned the replicated plot results here they are extend varieties only early to late call ross at 40 winkler at 45. i mean more or less pretty replication of our average production fields. You know, Cartier placing somewhere in the middle for middle heat unit maturity. Uh, Albany's late season, uh, well suited to uh, poor draining soils, cousin of richer soybeans. And then Winkler's at the top. So that's what we saw out of our trial results. Again, more trial results. Uh, it's really great to add, pool all these trial results together because you can start to see trends show up. And I've summarized those trends already. Sperlings are gonna be in your top three consistently, probably never your top. Winklers are gonna win yield trials uh, consistently every time. And you're gonna see that five to 6% yield increase as you go into later maturity. That's what we're seeing this year. But as we spread it out, we've got trials in, in Carmen and Arnod and Niverville uh, Cypress River, Morris area, and you start to see trends show up uh, with these results. If you want more details on these results, give anyone at the office a call and we'd be happy to share them with you and uh, also show how these North Star Junk varieties perform against other varieties in the marketplace. See, lots of them. So to conclude soybeans, I just want to leave you with this last slide and that is uh, our deadlines for early book, early pay uh, for soybeans in order that you can capture the lowest possible price to maintain some low cost of production. Please give us a call if you have any other questions. We'll be happy to help and elaborate further. With that being said, thank you for watching the segment of soybeans. And remember, you know it's coming. It starts with a seed. Thanks.